little layer to your art with texture and dimension. Our first inspiration is Willem de Kooning, an abstract expressionist, and we're using him as inspiration for our first piece. Now, I love his work. It's so aggressive, and he created these really intensely angry kind of looking paintings. So we're using that to create this neck piece. Now, there is stitching, there is painting, there is all kinds of fun stuff. So let's get started. So we're actually gonna start with the base, which is just a pattern that I printed off of the internet. And I'm going to throw it into my scanning mat so that I can turn it into a cutting file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go through that process. Now, the thing about de Kooning, if you ever looked at his work, is that the faces are of women, but you'd never be able to recognize the models who sat for him. They're very kind of um, eyes askew and teeth almost as fangs, and just a lot of things that are not what you would think of as like, hey, he had a model who sat for him. But if you look at it, he actually worked very hard. There are a lot of sketches of his work where you can see his earlier drafts and you can see how he liked to play with it. Now remember, being an expressionist was really about expressing your feelings. So he was expressing his feelings about how he was feeling through his work and that's exactly what we're doing here. So once I can see this, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it into a cut file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save that into the machine. And once it's saved, I am ready to cut it out. So because this is jewelry and it's wearable, I want to use a material that is gonna stand up to not only like the paint and the stitching and all the stuff we're gonna do to it, but also to frankly like sweat and rain and wear and all that other kind of stuff. So I'm using a very special hybrid paper which can actually also be um, washed it can be sewn, and it's basically designed to be abused. So sometimes I think it's fun. I like to go and uh, audition various materials and try them out. I read all the packaging when I go to just sort of find out what there is. So I've just resized this to be a little bit bigger because again, de Kooning always made a statement with his work and we want to too. And now I'm gonna go ahead and let it cut that out for me. So once this cuts, we're gonna head on over to the sewing machine. Now, de Kooning was working with oil paint and he was working in a number of layers. Because we don't uh, have the oil paint and we're gonna be using like acrylic and stuff, we're actually creating our under layer with stitching. And so we're gonna copy some of his really aggressive brush strokes, but with a sewing machine. We're gonna do something called free motion stitching. If you've never done free motion stitching, don't be scared of it. This is the time to try because this is really not hard and we're not going for perfect. It's kind of like, I think to think of it as doodling, but with a sewing machine. So that's exactly what we're doing. So our neck piece has cut out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and peel it off of the mat and then head to the sewing machine. So I have my free motion foot on and I'm just gonna drop the presser foot. And then it's important to remember to start your foot before you start your hand. So I'm gonna step on the pedal. And then depending how much I step on the pedal, I control the speed of what's happening. And all that I'm doing is just doodling with the needle. I can create shapes, but we're just trying to add texture. So you don't really have to think of it as like drawing. If you don't want to, you can just do angry scratches or you can practice your drawing skills, whatever it is that you feel like doing. You can go around, you can go up and down, you can practice some de Kooning marks, which are very sort of angry and pulling at it. But the whole point is just to use the sewing machine to create some additional texture, that under layer that you want on your work. So now I am just having a good time with this and relaxing. That's the other thing is don't clench up, don't get nervous. Like most things, it's a good idea always when you're being creative to be as free as possible. So I'm just gonna cover this whole 
collar with as much stitching as possible. Now, obviously, I'm using a yellow thread in here. You could use any color that you wanted, and really, I'm using the yellow just so that I can see it, because you can imagine that if you used a color like black or brown or something like that, you wouldn't be able to see it. So have fun, maybe even use some variegated thread. All you need to make sure when you're free motion sewing is that you can drop your feed dogs. That's the key. So the little metal teeth that are underneath my piece that I'm sewing, those are the feed dogs. For free motion, I'm controlling it, so I need to know that I can do that. So once this is covered with enough stitch, and the question is, what's enough? And the answer is always more, more, more. Then I'm simply gonna stop raise my needle, and I'm gonna change over to a regular foot because we're gonna do a zigzag stitch. So I've put on my J foot, I've raised my feed dogs, I've selected a zigzag stitch, and I've made it the widest zigzag possible. Now it's time to attach the neck wire. So I'm gonna lay these out together, and I'm gonna use a piece of tape to temporarily hold the middle of it in place. Now this is a kind of um, artist tape that's not gonna really stick which is important because I'm gonna to wanna to get it off later. So now I'm just gonna place this under a little ways away and then just like before, we're gonna go ahead and go. So I'm going on one side of the wire and then into the necklace, one side of the wire and into the necklace, one side of the wire and into the necklace. Now because this is a rubber necklace that I'm using and you certainly would want, not wanna use metal or anything like that in case the needle nicked it, I may have to help and encourage or push this along a little bit to really get it to go through. And remember, you can always pause, raise the foot, see where you are, and then keep going as needed. Now, I like to use um, just a really tight zigzag stitch, so it's more like a satin stitch, so that it really holds that on and you don't see that much of the rubber necklace under there. And once I get to the end of one side, I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch a couple steps, and then I just raise this up, use the thread cutter, and you can see I would just continue and go the other way. So I have one that's already done over at the other table. So I'm just using regular acrylic paint and I wanna paint it on a little bit thin because I don't wanna lose that stitching. The whole point of why we did it right was to have it be there. But you can see I'm, I'm not thinking a lot about what I'm doing. I'm just scrubbing some paint in there but letting the stitching show through. Now how much or how little you paint it is really up to you. If I'm actually playing with some of de Kooning's ideas, I probably wanna put in an aggressive eye of some kind. I'm just sketching in kind of the white so the eyes here, you could have some creepy teeth. He was known, as I said, for those kind of fang-like teeth. You can go ahead and just play with it and add it in, or you know, you can go in a completely different direction. The great thing about artistic inspiration is that you take from it what you want. You're not making a copy of anybody's work. It's 100% yours, depending what you do with it. So, if we look at the finished piece, you can see this is a little bit of de Kooning, a little bit of Julie. Brother International Corporation is the maker of the Scan and Cut Home and Hobby Cutting Machine with a built-in scanner and is known for supplying innovative sewing and embroidery machines. ScanandCut.com